Some fortunes are so large that we wonder how anyone could ever spend that much money in a single lifetime. But in reality, some of the largest fortunes in America have been wasted away in only a few short years. Hi everyone, Ken here. Welcome to this house. In the 1830s, a humble Norwegian fisherman named Peter Sather emigrated to the US in search of a better life. He quickly got a job at Drexel & Company, one of the largest banks in Philadelphia, and spent the next two decades moving up in the company. In 1850, Peter took his life savings out to San Francisco, rounding up investors to establish San Francisco's first bank, known as Drexel Sather & Church. Peter spent the next 13 years buying out his partners until he was the sole owner of the bank. At this point, in the mid-1860s, he was said to be the wealthiest man in all of California. During that time, he had several children, so when he passed away in 1886, each child received $500,000 the modern-day equivalent of about $16.5 million apiece. His daughter, and Mrs. Josephine Bruguer, could not wait to get her hands on that money. She had grand plans of living in a palatial home, enjoying all that high society has to offer, but on a budget that would ensure her father's fortune would give her financial security for the rest of her life. But those were just her plans, and not what would actually happen. She lived within her means for nearly 20 years, but eventually, the money began eating a hole in her pocket. She purchased a limestone townhouse in Manhattan and meticulously renovated it, even adding a formal ballroom. Then she budgeted $200,000 to build a cottage in Newport, where all the social elites summered. Being on a budget, she purchased a 15-acre lot far removed from the fashionable districts of Newport and hired architect Edward P. Whitman to transform an abandoned field into an opulent haven. The plot of land, known as Sunset Hill, offered views of the waterfront only from its summit which is where her house named Castlewood would be positioned. Mature trees and bushes were arranged all about the property, giving it the look of an old-world estate. To save money on the mansion's construction, she chose to dress the house in brick with glazed terracotta columns, cornice, and balustrade. When it was completed, the snow-white glazed terracotta was said to be blinding as it was hit by the sunlight. In 1905, she was ready to move into Castlewood, Though, she had gone over budget by about $100,000, bringing the cost of the mansion to the modern-day equivalent of about $10.5 million. Entering the mansion, we will pass through the vestibule to arrive in the Great Hall. All eight of the columns are carved from solid blocks of marble, and to save money on the ceiling, it was cast from concrete and painted white, rather than being crafted by plaster artists. Instead of having marble walls, inlaid bands of marble were arranged in panels and filled in with plaster to further reduce cost. Opposite the stair hall, towards the rear of the house is the ballroom, clad in quartered oak paneling. After just five years of living in the house, Josephine had it completely remodeled to be more reminiscent of her neighbor's ballrooms. Let's now pass through the marble door surround and continue into the next room. The dining room is anchored by a colossal sienna marble fireplace measuring 17 feet wide. The walls are skirted in oak paneling above a herringbone floor, so perfectly polished that the fruiting plaster vines above can be seen reflecting from it. Meandering through the mansion, we will come across the library, with floor-to-ceiling bookshelves surrounding us on all sides. The French walnut finishes greet us with a warm glow as a portrait of Josephine looks out over the room. As we venture into the salon, let's note that Josephine spent nearly $100,000 on the furnishings for her house. Couple that with the Louis XVI styling with an imported crystal chandelier and walls decorated in plaster roses, we begin to see where she ignored her budget. In her boudoir, we can imagine one of her 27 servants bringing her a dress to wear for the afternoon, as she reportedly spent upwards of $30,000 per year on her wardrobe, the modern equivalent of around a million dollars today. After just two years of living this lavish lifestyle, she began selling off her antiques and artwork just to pay the bills. By 1913, she had taken on so much debt that the bank foreclosed on Castlewood. She frantically attended the auction and attempted to buy back her most cherished items. This was a major reality check for her, and she had no choice but to carefully budget what little money she had left. She sold her Manhattan townhouse and rented a hotel suite. Then in 1915, tragedy struck. While traveling with her son Louis aboard the SS Arabic, a German U-boat attacked, causing the ship to sink. According to her son's account, she ran back to the cabin, attempting to grab her jewels before finding the lifeboats. But by the time she emerged, all the rafts had already been deployed. Lewis survived, but his mother was dragged to the ocean floor, diamonds in hand, as the boat sank. Castlewood changed hands many times over the years until the U.S. government acquired it during World War II, 
It was torn down to make way for the Navy's operations, and since then, the land has been further subdivided. For what it's worth, Josephine's story is a reflection of the transient nature of wealth and the human propensity to reach beyond our means. It's a tale that began with ambition and aspiration, echoed with moments of grandeur, but ultimately culminated in a sobering reminder of life's fragility and the fleeting value of material extravagance. As the walls of Castlewood fell, so did the legacy of a fortune that could have endured for generations, reduced to mere footnotes in history and fading photographs. Yet, within these remnants, we find stories that compel us to question our own values and the legacies we choose to build. Did any corner of Castlewood's grandeur capture you? Or perhaps it was the demise that left a lasting impression? Let me know your thoughts down below in the comments section. And while you're there, make sure to hit the subscribe button so you never miss an exciting episode of This House.